In this video, I go over my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day coming out December 8th, 2021. What is up guys, Justin here, aka No Good Comics, and welcome back to the channel. Of course, this is the video where I go over my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day coming out next week, which happens to be December 8th, 2021. Absolutely crazy how we are just digging into December at this point. I am very excited because I love the holiday season. Um, I just love these vibes. I love, you know, uh, the idea of presents and, and spending time with family and friends and all that good stuff. So definitely looking forward to these holidays coming around. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Take a moment, smash that like button if you haven't already. So Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Um, I wanted to take a moment real quick to uh, once again say congratulations to Sparks Comics and Caroline's Comics over at You Promised Me Comics, that channel, because they just reached their 1K milestone over on their YouTube channel. And uh, I, while I wasn't able to be there live with them to celebrate, uh, I definitely uh, sent them a video uh, kind of sharing my thoughts and everything. But again, I want to just take a moment to say congratulations, you two. Very excited for your journey and what you what you do for this community in general and uh, will continue to do. Uh, we just look forward to all your content that you guys do. If you don't follow Caroline and uh, Jeremy, make sure you do so. I put their information in the description below as you promised me comics. Um, with all that being said, I always say it is another great week for comics. Looking ahead now at this week coming up, there are so many great titles as always. A couple of new ones that I'm going to read into here. A couple of ones that are into issues two and three that I'm also very excited for. So let's break that down together. And I'm going to kick it off with my first book here on the list. It has to go to... Tales of Mother F. Goose. Uh, this is a book that I've heard about for a while. Uh, I think they did a pretty good job marketing it. Um, it is a one-shot, as I, I didn't realize that earlier, um, but it is a one-shot that is going to be released by Aftershock Comics. Uh, let's see, the um, the writer here, Frank Thierry, and the artist, Joe Elsma, uh, doing the, um, the work here, the interior and the cover that we're looking at right here. It is like Mother Goose, like, the mafia edition, like the uh, uh, all these different tales that they talk about. And even looking at the brief description here, I'll read just this little clip. It says, the three little pigs are uh, glutinous uh, casino owners. Little Miss Muffet is a hard-nosed cop with arachnophobia. The three blind mice are uh, ocularly impaired assassins. And Puss in Boots is the feline-faced scumbag. So, um, yeah, all that, I'm, I'm totally down. I have no idea what it's going to go into, but obviously it has to do with the fairy tale characters and they're kind of like twisted in a way. So really curious to see uh, what they do here with this. Frank Thierry, again, uh, doing the writing and uh, it just looks fun. It looks fun. So uh, I'm definitely down for that. Um, I see that there's a, a couple variants as well. So uh, we will see. But that's going to be my number 10 pick on the week, Tales of Mother F. Goose. Uh, going into my number nine pick, I'm going to go with this book. It's a Boom Studio book called Buckethead. I'm sorry, Buckhead. Uh, issue number one. I uh, don't know anything about it, but I always say like, uh, you know, groupings like, or um, um, publishers like Boom Studios and Aftershock, like I am just all on board with always giving their issue ones a shot. So um, this is one that came up, Buckhead issue number one. Um, let's see, the writer here, Shobo Coker, artist George Campadels, or Campadays. Don't really know too much about either of them. Um, and I don't even know what this is really about, but it just looked intriguing. Uh, you got these kids here on the front. Looks like they're being attacked by some sort of magical or mystical power or being of some sort um but anyways uh I, again automatic for me boom studios issue number one sign me up so that's why it's on my list here so going in at number nine buckhead issue number one uh, moving on to my number eight pick so i know last week i talked about this book and i i, I don't know if it got pushed back or whatever um but now you know looking back through the list seeing that it's still here to come out uh, December 8th. I want to bring it up again. It's Nita Hawes Nightmare Blog, issue number two. I believe it was higher on my list last week, um, but it definitely is still, um, I wanted to re-include it again in case anybody was looking for it, um, that that book just did not come out yet. Um, uh, I don't know what the, why I got pushed back or what the case was, but um, if you guys are familiar at all with Philadelphia, this is kind of um, a tie-in in a way that is uh, created within the same world, the same realm um, that uh, that the writer's been doing, Rodney Barnes. So Rodney Barnes doing the writing, artwork by Well B, 
And uh, issue one was just awesome and stunning all around. So, um, you know, a lot of it has to do with like vampires. It's very dark, very much a horror type vibe. The cool thing with this too, is it takes place in Baltimore. So uh, uh, for those who don't know, I have a lot of family in Baltimore. I'm a Baltimore Ravens diehard fan. Uh, so, you know, it's cool to just kind of see some of those connections. And I am curious uh, to see if they, how accurate they get with like some of the streets and, uh, and, and just some of the things that go on down there. So um, either way, that's going to be my number eight pick of the week. Nita Hawes Nightmare Blog issue number two, which by the way, I should note, uh, well, two things. One, this is an image comic. Two, uh, you do not need to necessarily have read Philadelphia. Um, I do recommend that you do. Uh, there are some small connections, but overall, if you were to just pick up the series from issue one and go with it, um, I don't think you'd be too confused. You'd be able to just go and enjoy it uh, without necessarily needing the rest. However, Philadelphia is awesome. I read the first trade, loved it. I still need to read the second trade. Uh, again, shout out to uh, Dan over at Comic Chop News. He's the one that hooked me up with the first two trades digitally. So thank you again, Dan. Appreciate that. Going to read the second trade very soon. Um, but yeah, so Philadelphia uh, ties in with uh, Nita Hawes Nightmare Blog, issue number two. Um, all right, going into my number seven pick. This is a Marvel issue number one here that I wanted to throw on. It's Wastelanders Hawkeye issue number one. I don't know anything about like what Wastelanders is or I mean obviously I looking at this front cover we see what looks to be Hawkeye I know there's a lot of hype going on right now because of the Hawkeye series over on Disney plus that's out um, which I am in enjoying as of right now um, so but the thing that really caught my attention here is the one little mention of who this really does involve it says witness the never before told story of Hawkeye's training with stick stick is a character that uh trained daredevil uh if you guys are not familiar with daredevil so uh the fact that these two are being tied together and i don't know if that's ever been done before i mean i guess all well, as it's noted never been done, never been told before i don't know if there's ever been hints to that before though either that the fact that hawkeye working with stick um but either way i think it's really cool uh i want to know more about this i don't know if it's a one shot per se um it could possibly be. It doesn't actually say here. Uh, it's written by Ethan Sachs and the artwork Ibram Robertson. Not familiar with either, but definitely looks interesting to me. This cover looks really cool. Um, and again, Hawkeye, the hype, it, the excitement. I'm, I'm on board to check this out. Um, I love the character stick. Definitely love the tie-ins to Daredevil. I'm curious if we get any type of mention of Matt Murdock in this at all. Who knows? Um, but either way, uh, I'm down. So I want to make sure to have this on the list. And this is a book I definitely will be checking out next week. Uh, so that's why it is my number seven pick of the week. Wastelanders, Hawkeye issue number one. All right, moving on to uh, number six, keeping the theme of Daredevil and Matt Murdock, um, we have Devil's Reign issue number one. This is a new series, uh, mini series, I should say. Uh, it's a one out of six, so it's a Marvel event. It's called Devil's Reign, obviously Daredevil involved, along with a, a bunch of other Marvel characters, as you can see on this front cover here, Iron Man, Captain America, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a lot. Chip Zdarsky still writing it, which is great because his Daredevil run has just been insane. I'm still behind right now, but I've been loving everything I read. Uh, I know a lot of people have been really big on the Daredevil run that Chip Zdarsky has been doing all the way even to the current stuff. It's just been fantastic. So um, the other exciting thing to note is that uh, they kept the artist here for this, uh, Marco Cicchetto, who is amazing. And he's been doing a majority of the Daredevil uh, main title work uh, with Chip. So uh, yeah, very excited for that. He also did this cover that we're looking at here. Um, there are a bunch of variants as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I see Peach Momoko was listed here. Uh, John Romita Jr. is listed here. And Hyuk Lee is listed. So a lot of big names. Um, so yeah, other than that, um, don't know much about where this is going to tie into the world that Chip has currently created, if, if at all. I assume it's going to somewhat tie into where they've left off so far. Um, but anyways, we'll see where this goes. Like I said, this particular event is only six issues. I don't know if there's going to be tie-ins or other things, but I will definitely um, stay on alert for that. Um, but I had to keep this in my top 10 as well. Definitely excited to explore some of that at some point. So um, I don't know if I should necessarily dive into this as is, or if I should go back and, I mean, either way, I should go back and catch up completely on Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil either way. Um, but I wonder if that would ruin anything if I were to just dive into this right now. Um, I'll have to do a little more research. But either way, I wanted to put that on the list and make everybody aware that that's coming out next week. So Devil's Reign, issue number one of six by Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto. Uh, that's going to be my number six pick of the week. 
before I go on, uh, always at my halfway point here, I want to do a community shout out. And this week's community shout out is going to go to my good friend Kevin over at Superpower Reviews over on YouTube. I'll put his link in the description below. He's also on Instagram as Karate Kevin 67. Uh, easy to remember, catchy, very catchy. And if you don't know Kevin, he is such a great guy. Um, he has been such a supporter of mine ever since we first connected. Um, and I know, I mean, I've been on his channel multiple times. He's been on my channel before, uh, interviewed him for Origins, and he is just an awesome, awesome dude. Uh, you could tell this guy just loves comic books, loves the community. He's very much involved. He does a ton of awesome content over on his YouTube channel uh, that I highly recommend checking out. They put a lot of high quality into it. He films in like a fancy studio and all this other stuff. He's very knowledgeable of everything that he talks about. Um, and Believe it or not, he does karate, hence the name Karate Kevin. So um, definitely check out Kevin. Kevin, if you're watching this, I appreciate everything you do, man. Love, uh, always a love and support everything that uh, that you're all about, all the efforts that you put into your channel, and uh, definitely want to keep that going. So again, anybody who's not following Kevin, make sure you do so, and definitely reach out to him over on Instagram for sure. Hit him up. Let him know I sent you there. Start talking comics with him because I know he's down for that. So um, that's going to be my uh, community shout out of the week. Uh, let's jump back into the list now going into number five. And of course, I'm going to go with another image comic book, A Thing Called Truth, issue number two. Um, I have to say I was very excited for issue number one. And once I read issue number one, I was even more excited. Uh, this book was fantastic. I really liked where this was going. Um, the idea of it uh, being essentially that this uh this scientist is very much wrapped up in her own work so much that it affects a lot of her uh, personal life and i think it can be really relatable in certain aspects of kind of how they tell this story um and uh, essentially she's used by this big company that she works for where she's trying to create some sort of um, um, medicine of, of some sort that's going to save the world. She, she's uh, dedicating her life and dedicating her time to doing something uh, as she views as much greater than herself. And uh, the only thing is by doing so, like I said, it is affecting some of her personal life and her personal relationships. And so to see kind of how she goes about some of that stuff and trying to, I guess, get a grip on learning more about herself and trying to figure out things on her own as well. Um, it's really interesting. And then to like completely flip things around, she gets into this crazy car chase and she meets someone else who's also uh, going some through some things that they never met before. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of things that happen here. Now I kind of think about it. Um, but it's definitely really well done. This first issue that I read uh, was really, really well done. Um, the uh, writer here, um, oh man, I'm going to butcher this. Yolanda... Zenfardino, maybe that sounds pretty right. Um, and the artist here, Alyssa Romboy or uh, Rombali, sorry, Rombali. Um, they, uh, I definitely enjoyed it. Like I said, that was issue one. This is just uh, coming out now for issue two, uh, and I'm very curious to see where this goes. It may be something that might be better in trade overall. I do. I feel like lately, and I say, I mean, I've talked about this before, but I feel, I, I feel like lately, a lot of the, uh, not even just image, but just um, indie books in general a lot of them the way they're written it just seems that they uh connect or they flow better or you get more in a sense um through a, as a trade um but either way i mean it's not going to stop me from diving into this issue and uh, if you read issue one i think you'd be on board with me as well to continue exploring this um but if not i understand if you want to wait read this all in trade uh, i think that experience is probably also going to be very good so either way keep this on your radar i'm definitely looking forward to this next week so that is going to be my number five pick of the week a thing called truth issue number two all right, going into my number four pick, um, it is a DC comic book, Superman, Son of Kal-El. Uh, this is the 2021 annual issue number one. And of course, Tom Taylor still doing the writing for this. I have been loving this series. Um, and for the, if you've been following my page, you already know that. Uh, so I don't think there's much to say here other than um, I noticed the artist, Steve Pew is going to be on here. I'm saying that right, Pew. Um, and there are some, well, and this cover here is by John Timms, uh, who's been the uh, regular the um the ongoing artist for the main series um so yeah definitely looking forward to kind of seeing where they change up where the story is going to go with um how it's going to tie into what what we've had so far in the regular title um and yeah if you haven't been reading the superman stuff i mean it definitely is not too late um i think the what was it the fifth issue that just came out or the fourth issue uh so you know if you haven't been reading any of it now is definitely an appropriate time to jump in um uh, and catch up i should say and then jump into the annual annual 
Um, so that is going to be my number four pick of the week. Tom Taylor, Superman, Son of Kal-El, the 2021 annual. All right, going into my final three here, top three. Um, all, all three of these could easily be number one. Um, I feel like I say that every time, but it really is true. Um, I'm going to go with an X-Men title here, Inferno, issue number three. This is uh, continuing to build on the finale of what Jonathan Hickman has created ever since House of X, Powers of X, and, and everything that's come after that, the Dawn of X stuff, uh, X of Swords, all that stuff you know, leading up to this big event, this this final mini-series that he's been putting together. Um, and issues one and two have been completely epic. I've been absolutely loving it. I'm really glad that I caught up on all this stuff. Shout out to Jason uh, for helping me get through and guide my, my way to uh, all the main uh, reading materials that uh, I needed in order to get to this point. Um, you know, I did skip some things around, but I definitely will go back at some point and, and, and you know, take some time and read some of the things that I skipped, but mainly to stick to the main storyline and see where things are going. Again, especially from House of X, Powers of Ten, like that stuff, um, it, the way it kind of re-jumps right back into this is really cool. And if anything, I probably should go back and read some of that again, just to get, you know, re-familiarized with some of the parts of where they left off. Because, I mean, I'm already, I'm already seeing it and I'm already being somewhat reminded in Inferno, but uh, I, I think it might even help even more with the experience of it. But either way, it's been fantastic. Um, hopefully you guys are caught up on this. If not, uh, I hope you get there sometime soon uh, because Inferno's been really, really good. So that's why it's my number three pick of the week, Inferno issue number three. Um, all right, going down to my number two pick here. It is, uh, a DC book here. Got to go with Dark Knights of Steel issue number two. Again, this book easily could be number one, uh, as well, but, uh, you know, we'll get to number one. Uh, but yeah, so Dark Knights of Steel issue number two, I loved issue number one. Um, I, I did a whole breakdown with copy 801 on this when that, when the first book came out, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, Tom Taylor again on the list and, uh, just doing some really awesome stuff. Uh, Yasmin Putri, uh, doing the, the artwork, which also is just outstanding. The fact that, uh, Putri is on the interior work is just like awesomeness. So i um, very excited for that as well. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, it is basically like a very much, it's a, it's a twist on your, what you know as Batman, Superman, like those characters, um, it's in, it's basically all takes place in a medieval time period. Um, and a lot of things twist, a lot of things change. So, you know, if you are getting into this, um, set your expectations and understanding that there's probably going to be a lot of unique storylines and unique, um, uh, characterization and, and character builds and, and relationships that might be very much different or tweaked to what you are used to with, um, characters like uh, Batman, Superman, uh, I know uh, Wonder Woman and um, um, like Harley Quinn uh, as well. So, you know, a lot of things kind of uh, change around, but it is a lot of fun um, and I, I'm looking forward to it. There are a lot of twists and turns right off the bat in issue one and uh, I'm hoping that there's a lot more. And it's only a 12 issue miniseries. So I, I like that they, you know, they're keeping it within um, a read, a reasonable read. And uh, I just see myself most likely wanting to get a hardcover of this when it comes out because I'm just loving it already. So um, anyways, that's my number two pick of the week. Dark Knights of Steel, issue number two by Tom Taylor. Uh, all right, uh, before we get into number one, uh, as always, take a moment, smash that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. One thing I forgot to address is the live chat right now. So if you're in the uh, uh, the premiered chat, thanks so much for hanging out as always. Uh, really do appreciate your time. I know these past couple of Thursdays, I actually was live. So if you're wondering... Well, now you already probably got the hint. I'm not live right now, but uh, as a premiered video, that's usually what these things are uh, at 1230 Eastern time on Thursdays. Uh, the past couple of weeks, I was able to be home. So it kind of worked out right to these live things. But uh, and maybe with the holidays coming up, I might be home again for some periods of time where I might do them on a, on a different day other than Thursday. But in the meantime, you know, stay tuned. Keep an eye out. I, you know, for the most part, we'll still be keeping these on um, uh, twelve thirty Eastern time on Thursdays to be premiered. So either way, thank you all so much that are uh, in the premiere chat right now, and thanks all who are just taking the time to just watch this replay in general. Always do appreciate your your time. Uh, I hope that, that you enjoy these lists. Uh, I'd love for you to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree with this list. If you think I'm missing something, uh, uh, if you have a recommendation for me, I'm always open for that as well. So keep me posted on all that. Um, but hey, let's get into number one, and of course. I got to go with the finale here of Swamp Thing, issue number 10. And I I really, I should say finale because there are, are, are already hints that 
uh, uh, Rom V is going to continue with this series or this series is going to continue. I, I don't um, know all the details with how it's going to go. I, I, um, I'm sure Rom V is going to still stay on it. I don't know if they're changing anything else up about it other than that. But um, either way, I'm, I'm very excited. This has been a fantastic series. If you guys have not read Swamp Thing, um, I've said this in the past. I feel like, so the cool thing is Swamp Thing, if you don't know, if you haven't been watching my videos, Swamp Thing has been a top three on almost all my lists anytime that it's like about to come out. So of that time or that that uh, time of the month or whatever, uh, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's almost always been a top three book and that's how fantastic it's been. Um, Ram V is just killing it. Love everything that Ram V is doing in general. I've talked to him plenty uh, about him plenty, um, already before, but, uh, just, this has been a masterpiece. I really love, uh, what they've been doing. And I actually just, just looked at the cover here and realized it's, it's adjusted to 10 of 16. So it seems that they're still putting an end to this. Um, I thought it was just flipping to becoming an ongoing period from the rumors I initially heard, but it looks like 16 is going to be the new finale. Um, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, either way, I, I, and I'm still hoping that even goes even further. I know Ron V had announced that he's planning on a lot of other things, a lot, a lot of other projects that he's doing. And because of that, he's stepping down from other things. And so I understand all that. Maybe that's why they still capped it at 16. Um, but uh Either way, I'm really excited. Um, Mike Perkins doing the artwork. He has been killing it as well. And I don't know much about Mike Perkins other than what he's done here on Swamp Thing. And that's probably shame on me. I should probably be looking more into what else Mike Perkins has done because the stuff's been fantastic. And I'm really excited for it. So um, this is going to be uh, a part two of where they left off on issue nine. So if you haven't caught up on issue nine yet definitely i would recommend doing that um and i always say this you do not need to know much about swamp thing to get into this series overall so if you are brand new to swamp thing which i pretty much was i did read alan moore swamp thing maybe uh, maybe a couple months prior to this um and the, and that um i would say yes there are like small tie-ins to that but nothing at all required you really could just jump into this because this one thing is a a new character essentially the person that takes over uh the the, the green is a whole different character altogether so um because of that and because of how Ron V tells the story i think anybody can get into this so um don't let that hold you back if if you're sitting there thinking like, oh man, Justin, like I just I'm not a Swamp Thing person. I've never got into them before. That's okay. If you like if you just like good stories uh, and especially horror type vibes uh, with a lot of emotion, then this book is for you. So um, that's a, a again Swamp Thing issue number ten out of the new sixteen. Uh, very excited for. And yeah, so that's gonna be my number one pick of the week. Swamp Thing issue number ten. Uh, I'm pumped. I'm super pumped for it. And again, that these are all books, as a reminder, coming out next week, December 8th, 2021. Um, these are just the books I'm excited for. I hope you are too. Uh, it is always a great week for comic books. Very excited. So I uh, hope you're all doing well. Again, thanks so much for hanging out. If you're in the premiere chat right now, shout out to all of you. Um, I will not be doing a Comic Collector Origins this Saturday. Um, however, it'll start up again on the, uh, what is it, the 11th. Uh, and I will have my good friend Michelle, aka Moonlit Comics, as my guest. So um, nothing on the 4th, but I will be back on the 11th, 2 o'clock Eastern time on my channel here. So um, until then, I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, smash that like button on the way out, and I will talk to you later.